hello and welcome to TIFO IRL, our brand new channel. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, please subscribe to the channel and help support us. I'd also like to remind you uh, that you can go to theathletic.com forward slash TIFO football and currently pick up some sort of excellent deal uh, on a subscription to The Athletic. I can't exactly remember what it is, but they're always great. We are going to look today at Ben White uh, and why lots of people are interested in signing him and why potentially uh, it makes sense for him to move to Arsenal. So, Ben White. So, as reported in The Athletic by David Ornstein, Arsenal are moving closer to reaching an agreement with Brighton and Hove Albion uh, for the defender Ben White. White obviously in the current England squad for the Euros as well. What we're going to have a quick look at here is how White played for Leeds, uh, how he's been playing for Brighton and Hove Albion as well, and then quickly look at where he might fit into Arsenal and Mikel Arteta's system. So if we look at Leeds here, Leeds, uh, Ben White was on loan at Leeds, uh, not the season that's just finished, but the one before that and he excelled. This is where he played on the right side of a back four leads in their kind of classic 4-3-3, 4-1-4-1 shape. Um, and what White brought to this team uh, was something that's quite unusual for a centre-back, but fitted perfectly with Marcelo Bielsa's high-octane, high-intensity system. Uh, I did a piece for The Athletic back in August of last year looking at White uh, from a kind of statistical point of view. And something that really, really stood out was how well he moves the ball up the pitch. So in terms of uh, progressive carries from goal kicks, progressive carries that end in the opponent's half, and also uh, beginning sequences that end in shots, Ben White was in the top three for championship defenders for all of those things. The only other player that was in the top five for them was Fulham's Tim Ream, weirdly enough. Um, so this means that White was able to add to build up, to bring something to Leeds's creativity, to allow them to push higher up the pitch. Uh, and he has this ability as a central defender to break the lines with his ball carrying and with his passing that is really quite unusual. So when he started in this position here, um, Leeds would build up from the back with uh, the fullbacks pushing high up defensive midfielder dropping in here. I know I say this about literally every team, but it is true. From a goal kick, you get this sort of thing here happening. And then what would what would often be the case is that because Calvin Phillips is moving in this direction here, Luke Ayling's pushing up here, which is sort of dragging a player here, White would often have quite a lot of space. And this is where either a central midfielder drops in and White's able to hit him with this kind of pass here, or you get this ball carrying. Um, that is my version of ball carrying. It's not very good, but it'll work for now. What that immediately does is it puts Leeds on the front foot because if your central defender here, and you've got someone like Liam Cooper kind of hanging back to add a bit of a, a shield, if your central defender is able to bring the ball up this high and potentially even take players on and beat the first line of the press, then your whole team can play higher up the pitch and compress space. And this is obviously very important for how Bielsa wants to play with lots of overloads, but also because he can pass from deep positions here, uh, someone like Calvin Phillips is also integral to this, it allows for this very quick transitional style of football that Leeds like to play. And that is how Leeds try and play football. So what Ben White did here was basically act as really a, a, an absolute creative hub for them alongside Calvin Phillips, getting the ball from the defensive area forwards to either the midfield or even the attacking area. Ben White would even get up into the penalty area sometimes. There's another important thing that's worth noting from his time at Leeds, but this time from a defensive perspective. So Leeds used quite a weird defensive system, which they've continued to use in the Premier League last season, the season that's just finished. Um, this is a man-orientated pressing system uh, with a kind of man-marking element to it. But what Leeds really, really like to do, and this is one of Bielsa's central tenets, is that they like to leave a spare man. Um, so this is, we've done some videos on the channel about Bielsa. We had a whole Bielsa week. You can go back and check it out on our other channel. 
<clears throat> but what this means is that if leads are back in this sort of uh, back four system here like this, if the opposition have got three players pushing forwards, leads will always try and affect, let's give the ball to this guy, leads will always try and affect a free man. So these guys are man marking here. So let's, can we, no, we can't. We'll make a little line here. Oh, so they're like that, they're like that, they're like that. Um, they would be like this. He'll be trying to get back here for like that. And White, as someone who often was the spare man, is able to do two things, both of which are really important. So the first thing is that he can cover the spaces. Now he would tend to cover the spaces on the right-hand side, that's because he's the right-sided centre-back, it's also because Luke Ayling is really, really aggressive on that right-hand side, but also because he's right-footed and that means he can naturally move across and then open up passing lanes with it. So this whole area here would be White's domain in terms of covering across. Also though, as the spare man, when Leeds win the ball back, he is then in a position to be able to begin the attack. Now, if they were going man for man but weren't leaving the spare person, what that would mean is that when they won the ball back, it would be quite difficult to progress the ball uh, while retaining control of it. Yes, you could give it back to Melier, the goalkeeper, who would maybe boot it long or try and hit somebody moving into space. But this free man system means that, that Ben White was very frequently in a position, let's say this challenge here has won the ball, ball goes back to Ben White, leads are immediately then looking to transition and break into space, and White has the option either to bring the ball forwards or to hit one of these long passes, and that begins the transition game that we were talking about before. So Leeds really, and Bielsa particularly, really uh, added stuff to White's game. Um, brought out this side of him that's able to bring the ball forwards, able to contribute to attacks or building attacks with progressive passing and ball carrying. But also the spare man system and the fact that he had to act as a cover means that his anticipation developed. It means his pace, his acceleration to get across into those areas to cover really improved. And as the spare man, he was then able to contribute to the attack. So let's have a quick look at what he does for Brighton now. So at Brighton and Hove Albion, uh, Ben White has played mostly as a right-sided centre-back in a back three. He has, on occasion, played out here as a defensive midfielder as well. And in fact, in a ring recent England substitute appearance, that's what he did too. Um, a lot of what White was able to do at Leeds uh, is stuff that he tries to do at Brighton as well. So the progressive passing is still there. The ball carrying has lessened, but that's because Premier League defences and midfield give you less time on the ball than some of the championship sides. Um, but he does still have that in his game. It's not something that just, you know, fizzles away. I'm just trying to find a better word for it there. But A um, couple of things to note from Brighton, though, that are worth talking about. So firstly, Brighton play with these quite advanced wing backs. White, again, will occupy this same sort of area here uh, in terms of covering. But also, he does like to get forwards into this kind of position here. So when Brighton split their centre-backs quite wide, um, that gives two things. It means that the wing-back on this side can push up really, really high. This was particularly noticeable when it was uh, Tariq Lamptey, who would almost act as a kind of orthodox winger in this position. And he's so fast that he was able to make recovery challenges. And because Ben White's really good at passing, that was on all the time because Lamptey would basically go up, up the line, beat his man uh, and or, or get away from a, a defender who was trying to cover back with that pace. And then White was able to find him in that wide area. That's really, really helpful, particularly if you've got a particularly attacking wing back and you're playing a back three system. The other thing that White's really good at doing, doesn't do it all that often because it is quite low percentage, but you will see him hitting really nice long crossfield passes. Now sometimes they'll be directly to a man, often though they'll be into a space that a wing back can advance into here. Once the ball's then been collected there, this wing back can push up. You've got uh, another wing back on the other side joining in this attack here. And then of course, because of the kind of defender that White is, 
He can push up here. That allows this double pivot to get forwards a little bit more. Sometimes Basuma will drop off. And again, Brighton can then really compress the space. And because White has pace and acceleration and anticipation, he can lock up a lot of this flank, even when his starting position is more like here, which allows this wing back to be super aggressive and also allows the midfield to get forwards here. So a lot of what White has brought to uh, Brighton is stuff that he developed under Bielsa, similar kind of techniques, but playing in a different system just allows for one or two additional possibilities to showcase what a good player he is. So what might he do at Arsenal and how might that be helpful? So Ben White at Arsenal would play probably in a back four. Arteta obviously has used a back three at times and actually for some reasons that does make sense. I would refer you to a video that we did uh, on our other channel uh, that JJ Bull made about uh, Mikel Arteta's tactical tweaks that kind of takes you through various formations that Arteta has used and looks at the strengths and weaknesses of those. But it seems like he probably wants to play sort of a 4-2-3-1. That does make quite a lot of sense in terms of his football upbringing and also in terms of some of the players that Arsenal have either signed or, or already have. And that means that White would probably play on the side of a, a back four here. Now, this does work quite well for a couple of reasons, and they're really just things that we've seen already. So if you have a back four like this, then obviously you'll get this sort of shape forming here with one of these midfielders dropping off a little bit. White can still patrol this sort of area here. And then what you're looking at is Arsenal are gonna try, particularly against teams that sit deep, they're gonna try and exploit the wide areas. So your wing back will push up. The way that Arteta has often used Smith Row is to break across into these half spaces to try and overload them. So you've got a wide player here, someone like Pepe, who's looking to run in behind here or try and curl shots in, but is quick and dynamic. Smith Row is the kind of link guy who moves across from the 10 slot and creates this sort of passing triangle here. And that naturally means that if White is dropping across into this right half space, but deep, that gives Arsenal not only a good set of passing options from White in this position, but also kind of locks this part of the pitch up. It also means again, like we've seen before, that Arsenal can play quite a high line and try and look to create a sort of three, two, five shape. Now, who does these bits will change from time to time, but this seems like something that Arteta started with. It seems like something he's comfortable with. And in terms of the players available to him, this kind of shape really makes sense for Arsenal. Of course, the other thing is that if you have a, a midfielder maybe who drops off to this side, then White's over here. And again, what you have with him is this ability to progress the ball forwards. Think of someone like Harry Maguire and how important he is for Manchester United and England with his ability to carry the ball up. That's what you get with Ben White in these wider positions. So all of a sudden, you're able to pack the box a little bit more because White's actually the one who's carrying the ball up into this advanced area. You get this nice shape behind then and White can either look for an overload, uh, an overlap here he can play the ball out for a cross into the area here maybe, or even look to use these progressive passes to get people running in behind. Uh, someone like Aubameyang coming off this side here, round the blind side of the defender with White making those passes, having carried the ball forwards, that could be super effective for Arsenal. Now, White as a defender has one or two limitations. There's actually a really, really helpful article that Tom Werville wrote uh, on The Athletic with some graphics and stuff. So I'm gonna bring that up now and just talk you through one or two of the things. So here's a radar from uh, Tom's article, which is uh, built using Smarter Scout data. Simply put, with radars like this, the closer the line is to the edge of the circle, the better they are at that thing. So we can see here clearly, in terms of carrying and dribble volume, that's good. Progressive passing, which is passing that, that moves the ball forwards towards the opposition's box, that's also good. Defending intensity and impact, he scores really highly here. What this means is that his position forces the opposition to play the ball into other areas, disrupts opposition buildup. 
But his defending is largely done through that positioning. So he's not actually winning the ball back a huge amount. He's also definitely not um, contesting large numbers of aerial duels. It is worth noting, of course, with defensive statistics, that whether you're playing in a back four or a back three does alter those numbers. If you're dividing it between another centre back or two other centre backs, clearly your numbers are going to be adjusted for that. And also different defenders have different roles within defensive systems. So it may be that, you know, for example, if he does move to Arsenal and he's paired with someone like Gabriel, he'll be looking to win the bulk of the headers, whereas White's job will be more about sweeping up behind and then playing the ball forwards. But you can see this is a, a centre-back who, who adds both defensively and in terms of attack. It is also worth comparing, which we can do here if we slide down. This is what he did at Leeds. So here you can see, again, that disruption of the opposition moves, really, really important. Um, same high volumes here for link-up play and carrying, in fact, better for link-up play, not quite so good for carrying, but also keeps the ball really, really well. Still not winning lots and lots of headers. Again, that's because he's dropping off and he's sweeping around. But what we can see here is that he's a well-rounded defender. Yes, he's got room to develop, but there are certain qualities that he brings that are unusual for a centre-back. And, and particularly, say, if you look, like we mentioned before, at what Maguire brings to Man United with his abil ability to carry the ball forwards, that can be really, really important for sides who want to play high up against teams that are compact and low. Now, I know if Arsenal fans are thinking about this, the other question in the back of their mind is perhaps, why are we signing Ben White when we've already got William Saliba? That is a different question. And again, I would just say that when you're comparing defenders, it can be very, very hard just looking at metrics because every defender's system is different. Every defender's role within those systems are different. So yes, there is definitely a question to ask about why you're spending potentially a lot of money on one centre back when you already have somebody of a very high quality in the right sort of age bracket. But again, that is a different question. If Ben White were to move to Arsenal, he would do a very good job for Arteta and he would probably add certain things that they've been lacking to this point. So that's Ben White. Uh, this has been TIFO IRL. Thanks very much for watching. Like I said, if you like this, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, and we will be back soon with more content. Thank you very much.